morning, MCCDC, and welcome to another beautiful Sunday. Please rise as you're able and join us in our morning praise and worship. Oh, come, let us adore him and old familiar. But Jesus is the same today, yesterday, today, and forevermore. So we come here to adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, is worthy for he the highest. So come, let us adore Emmanuel, God with us. During this season of Advent, God is with us, Emmanuel. And to symbolize that during this season, we have brought the altar into this place to represent how close God is to us, the symbols of our faith close enough to touch. This is also a season of connection. And so rather than just seeing the back of someone's heads, you have a chance to look across the room and see the beautiful souls that God has brought into this place. We are so glad that you are here during this season of Advent and all seasons. If it is your first time at MCCDC, my name is Dwayne, the senior pastor. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you. 
and to let you know that we do not have visitors at MCCDC. We have friends who we just can't wait to meet. So if it is your first time, we do not want to embarrass you, but we do want to welcome you. We have some information for you. And if you're comfortable and can just raise your hand high enough for the ushers to see where you are, this applause is to say good morning and welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And good morning. My name is Kathy Alexander. I'm the associate pastor, and I too would like to welcome you here to MCCDC. It's so glad to be so close to all of y'all here today. I want to bring to your attention our wall hanging, our door hanging. There's a door behind there. And we uh, have gone from sand in the desert to the star in Bethlehem. And so we've had some of our uh, local artists here in the congregation to come and transform our day into night and to represent the town of Bethlehem and the star over the manger of God's child's birth. If you uh, would open up your worship folder, there is a piece of paper inside, and we call that our connection card. If you uh, have a prayer request that you would like prayed for this week, if you would write that down and write your name on the card and drop this little card in the offering plate as it goes by today, our pastoral care ministers will be in prayer with you this week. All right, we invite you to take out your cell phones just to make sure they're on silent, but do leave them on so you can send a text message to someone, invite them to church, check in on Facebook, send out a tweet. Let folks know that MCC is the place to be. be. It's a place to be all through the year and certainly during the season of Advent. We also want to greet our online congregation, live stream today. Uh, we've had uh, emails during the week of folks who have been checking in from Idaho, Philippines, and beyond. So we are so grateful for our live stream uh, ministry as well as the hearts and faces that are right here in this place. So I invite you to rise as you're able, introduce yourself to someone you may not know as we continue in worship today.
be seated. Gloria in excelsis Deo. The face of our community has changed. The moment that we've been preparing our hearts for has occurred this week. And as you might have noticed on some of the Facebook posts, and as you might notice when you walk in today, our view is different. We get to see other things. Um, the workmen carried our tree away. They mulched our tree for a new air and new life and new beginning right at that spot on the corner of Fifth and Ridge. We have some remnants of the tree in our parking lot. Uh, if you'd like to uh, take some home with you, um, they're much smaller than this. <laughs> Yet we will uh, pray the artist on our community will take some of that uh, mulch and take some of the wood chips and create a lasting memory of God's tree that we had use of for just a little while in this community. So let us open our hearts and open our minds and open ourselves to the new thing that God will be doing in this community and beyond. Let us go to God in prayer at this time in the third Sunday of Advent. Gracious God, this is a time of expectation. This is a time of perplexity for some. This is a time of preparation for surgery and preparation for new birth and preparation for new beginnings and preparation for closure, preparation for what lies behind and beyond today. So gracious God, be with us, be with each of us during that time. God, we need you now more than ever. We need all that you provide. We need a child's like spirit and a child's like heart and a child's energy, oh my God. Thank you, God that you are concerned about each of us. Thank you that you care so much that you will guide our way, that you will guide our hearts, that you will be right with us. Gracious God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your care and your concern. And I do pray, O oh God, that as we move from this space, that we move into each of our different worlds, O oh God, that you would open our hearts, open our minds, open our arms to receive all that you have for us and to give back into return those with skin on, those who need our love and care, those who need all that you have to provide through us. So gracious God, thank you. And we pray your love, we pray your peace, and we pray your joy on this third Sunday of Advent. It is in your many names, and in the name of love, I do pray. Amen. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work, say no weapon formed against me shall prosper, oh no, it won't work, for God will do what he said he would do, he would stand by his word, he will come through. Oh, God will do what he said he would do. He would stand by his word, by his word. Say, oh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Oh, no, it won't work. 
work, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No, no, it won't work. Say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't We will proceed with our Advent litany and lighting of the Advent candle. The litany is found on the first page of your bulletin. I will be the one and you will be the many. Joy, it seems, is unrevealed. Wilderness, gladness, desert blossoms, abundant joy and singing. This all seems so very elusive. Be strong, says the voice in the wild. Do not fear. The way before you is holy and is opening now. Come. You, the one, opening eyes, moving limbs, cleaning sores, raising death, giving life. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Our scriptures today are from the voice translation. Would invite you to, in the gospel reading today, read the section that's listed as John's followers. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 1 through 4. <clears throat> Imagine the wilderness whooping for joy, the desert's unbridled happiness with its spring flowers. It will happen. The deserts will come alive with new growth, budding and blooming, singing and celebrating with sheer delight. The glory of Lebanon cedars and the majesty of Carmel and Sharon will spill over to the deserts. The glory of the Eternal One will be on full display there, and they will revel in the majestic splendor of our God. So with confidence and hope in this message, strengthen those with feeble hands. Shore up the weak need and weary. Tell those who worry, the anxious and fearful, take strength, have courage, there's nothing to fear. Look here, your God, Right here is your God. The balance is shifting. God will right all wrongs. None other than God will give you success. God is coming to make you safe. John was still in prison, but stories about Jesus' teachings and healing reached him. So John sent his followers to question Jesus. Go back and tell John the things you have heard and the things you have seen. Tell him you have seen the blind receive sight, the lame walk, the lepers cured, the deaf hear, the dead raised, and the good news preached to the poor. Blessed are those who understand what is afoot and stay on my narrow path. John's disciples left, and Jesus began to speak to a crowd about John. 
what did you go into the desert to see? Did you expect to see a reed blowing around in the wind? No. Were you expecting to see one dressed in the finest silks? No, of course not. You find silk in the sitting rooms of palaces and mansions, not in the middle of the wilderness. So what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, a prophet and more than a prophet. When you saw John, you saw the one whom the prophet Malachi envisioned when he said, I will send my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare the way for you. This is the truth. No one who has ever been born to woman is greater than John the Baptist, and yet the most insignificant person in the realm of heaven is greater than he.
Thank you for that beautiful song. That was written by our own uh, Tyrone M. Stanley, Minister of Worship Arts, for the 11 o'clock service. So thank you, Tyrone, for that insight into what Mary and Joseph were feeling and pointing to the star. Today, I invite you to imagine. Imagine the wilderness whooping for joy. Now, when's the last time we really whooped in church? I mean, we've said amen, but when's the last time we really had a good old-fashioned whoop? Now, I'm from West Texas, and so we knew what it was to whoop. So let's go ahead and get into the spirit of this scripture. And let's actually, we've got, we've got two parts of the congregation here. Let's start over here. Let's have a good whoop on the parking lot side. All right. Not, not too bad, considering you're not used to doing that in church. Okay, let's try it on. You all have had a chance to see what's going on over here. Let's have a good whoop on this side. All right, all right. We're in this together. Let's just have a good old whoop together. All right. Imagine the desert whooping with joy. John the baptizer is one who had really dreamed about this coming true. He was steeped in the teachings of the prophets. And so he was dreaming for the day when indeed the wilderness and the desert would whoop for joy, would rejoice. Last week we found John the baptizer in the desert speaking this powerful and beautiful message of repentance, which is really about growth and change and learning and becoming who we are called to be in God. He was excited in proclaiming that the Messiah had come, that this one who would change and bring God's love into the world was here at last. John the Baptist was effusive because he saw the promises of God coming true. He was on a high. And yet how things can change. The one who was whooping in the desert is now in prison. And the whooping has stopped. And in fact, this one who seems to have had such great, amazing, abundant faith now seems to be questioning. He sends the disciples of Jesus back to Jesus with the question, Are you the one? Are you really the expected one? Are you who you say you are? And if you are, what am I doing in prison? If you can indeed do anything, if you are triumphant and victorious, if you can save the world... Can't you save me? John the baptizer is now dealing with disappointment. It raises a good question for us. What do we do in our life when the whooping stops? What do we do in our life when we find ourselves in some kind of a wilderness or another? In other words, how do we handle disappointment? I think we get some really good clues from John. I think he sets a wonderful model and example for us. You see here that this person of faith doesn't just buck it up and doesn't just do a rah-rah thing. He actually questions God. And the model for us is that the first thing to do when we're disappointed is to go ahead and ask God why. We don't have to pretend to have this faith that is all big and triumphant and bold. It's okay to be real and vulnerable before God and to say, God, if you are who you are, then why am I dealing with this? God, what in the world is up with this? I mean, I drank smoothies for 20 years, and now I've got this cancer diagnosis. Well, what's up with this? I did all the right things things. They said if you get a good education, you'll get a good job. Well, God, not only do I have all these student loans, I don't have that good job. So are you who you say you are? Or should I look somewhere else? 
And the truth is, a lot of folks are looking somewhere else. They're, they're trying to find God in their own efforts, that their own attempts for success. God doesn't seem relevant to many. It is okay to question God and to invite God into our real lives, whatever our real lives might be like. Amazingly enough, sometimes that is the opening that God needs. God needs our openness, our vulnerability, and our doubts. It's at those moments when our faith and our lives get real. And we've got a God who is real enough for us. God with us, Emmanuel, who comes right into the middle of our lives and says, I'm here, you're hurting, speak your hurt to me, your disappointment. How do you handle disappointment? Go ahead and question God and be real and know that that's not a lack of faith. That's actually real faith. While you're questioning God, then be ready for the next piece in all of this. Sometimes we question God, and then God questions us. And sometimes it takes disappointment for us to really look at the questions that are the most important questions. One thing to do when you face disappointment is don't waste it. I mean, disappointment's painful. And unless you ask every question that comes through the disappointment, you're missing out on what it holds. Learn everything. I don't believe that God brings disappointments into our lives, but I believe that God wants to teach us in the midst of our disappointments. And so what question is God asking you in the midst of whatever disappointments you might be facing? It's a chance for us to hear God say, you've asked who I am, now I'm asking who you are. Are you really living the purpose for which I designed you for? Are you really growing in your faith? And if so, what will that take? Are you ready for me to walk with you in that journey? Learn absolutely everything. And know that oftentimes in the midst of that disappointment, God is actually birthing something new. How many times has something new come out of loss? I just kind of want to do a little poll. You don't have to raise your hands, but when have you learned the most? Through your victories or through your failures? <laughs> God takes it all. God uses it all. When the space appears empty, something new is being birthed. Just take a look. <laughs> When I first saw that our tree was dying, actually many months ago, it's been happening for a while, I found myself wondering, you know, how's the congregation going to handle that? It's become such a symbol of our faith, and we had that tree on this wall over here that echoed the tree there, and I really dreaded the day that we had this week. I knew the day was coming. We weren't sure when it was. We saw the dots on the tree, and then Wednesday night, I went out there to walk down the sidewalk, and I saw the no parking signs. <laughs> And I said, Reverend Kathy, it's coming. The signs say, when, Thursday or Friday, one of those two days. Well, early Thursday morning, it was coming down. And we felt that. Then I walked in the sanctuary, and I looked up, and I saw some trees I hadn't noticed before. And on that particular day, Thursday, the sky was full of the most amazing clouds. And I saw some of... Uh, these amazing birds just flying way out there. And, uh, and what came to me was this. I saw God in that tree, but now I see God in those trees. And I see God in that sky, and I see God in those birds, and I see a clear view of heaven that will not be diminished with the loss of God's tree, not our tree. I think one of the reasons it was so painful for some of us, and at least for me, is that it was my tree. I'd forgotten it was God's tree. And because I was holding on to it so much, it hurt me. It's God's tree. 
and our lives are God's lives. And sometimes when it hurts and sometimes when it seems like empty space, we just need to see what God wants to show us now. Now. So if you're experiencing a loss in your life beyond the tree, if you're struggling with disappointment, if you're wondering where God is, what new view does God want to see you see? What new view does God have for you? Disappointment, how do we handle it? Especially during the holidays when we're supposed to not be disappointed. <laughs> of all the seasons, this is the season when we are supposed to be just tinkling with light and with joy and we're supposed to be effusive and bubbly. <laughs> You're supposed to feel the Christmas spirit because that's what we're supposed to do. But the thing about it is the problems in life don't go on hold for Christmas. And sometimes it almost seems like Christmas makes it worse. If you're trying to provide for your child, if you're trying to make ends meet, and you're barely getting by the rest of the year and you get to Christmas, and the only way to give your kids some gifts is to go further into debt, what in the heck do you do? You just hold it inside keep it. I think what's important in those kind of situations is to know that you're not alone. And I think that's one of the things that oftentimes happens with disappointment. It's like we're ashamed this has happened in our lives and so we just try to keep it all in. So the third thing I, I would say beyond questioning God and inviting God to question you is don't try to do it by yourself. And, and they say that's what we're supposed to do. It's like we've been taught that from an early age, that we're to be the strong individual, that we're to have strong shoulders. I mean, we live in a society where people say, I'm the only one that can fix it, and take great pride in this sense of independence. But the reality is when disappointment hits, we need each other more than ever. And there's no shame in facing difficulties and struggles in life. Church more than anywhere needs to be the place where we can come and be real. And yet, we are taught that we're supposed to be praising and joyful and happy in church. So how many of us pull ourselves together so we can look good in church? How many of us muster every ounce of energy we have carrying this great weight on our shoulders only to walk in and lift ourselves up and put this fake smile on our face and say, here I am, I'm at church, I love everybody, everybody loves me, and you're not feeling it at all, but you feel that's the expectation, so you do that and you leave feeling worse than when you got here because you've had to be fake the whole time. That's not what we're about. This is a place where brokenness is welcome. Where you don't have to stand alone in your hurt. Where you have someone who maybe will not fix your problem. In fact, they probably will not fix your problem. But can listen to you in the midst of it. That's what we've got to be about. I mean, I love that we have the live streaming ministry now. It means that there's someone in a hotel somewhere now who couldn't get to church otherwise are able to be here. But we also need each other in the same room and in the same place where a warm hand can touch our hurting heart. How do you handle disappointment? Ask somebody to stand with you in it. Say, I need you. You need me. We need each other. That's what community is. That's why we're here. Indeed, it's not just a slogan. We are stronger together. And that's a powerful spiritual message that will strengthen us in times of disappointment. It's when we can see someone else looking back at us with love that we can begin to imagine again. Because when we look in the mirror and we only see ourselves, we will only see the hurt and the faults, and we'll get tired of what we see. But when we can look at somebody else and know that they're there with us, we can rise up again. And we can dream again. And we can imagine again. And we can think bigger than we did before because our world is bigger than ourselves. That's how you face disappointment. That's how you go through difficult times. 
ultimately that's what John did those disciples came back to him and said we've got an answer for you now about who Jesus is he's the one who's bringing healing he's the one who's bringing hope he's the one who's feeding and John said thank you for that message with those words he was no longer imprisoned at least spiritually when we have each other nothing can bring us down and now during these times we need each other more than ever to restore hope again our congregation in St. Petersburg a few weeks ago had swastikas put on their sidewalks outside the church it's the church that's now pastor by the former pastor here the Reverend Elder Candace Schultes and there was a lot of angst a lot of anger a lot of fear so many feelings that came from that it took a child a child went and beyond the hate symbols that child took colorful markers and drew unicorns and rainbows at that moment the wilderness of hatred was whooping with the joy of a child a child who in place of hate gave images of color and love that is our invitation do you hear the whooping in the wilderness today listen close because God is doing a brand new thing working in us and through us know today that the desert and the wilderness is coming alive through the people of God amen and amen And so we offer here these waters of baptism, waters that bring new life to the desert, waters that renew, waters that restore. We also offer for you here today this oil and laying on of hands in ancient times. This was the balm in Gilead, the healing. It's also the presence of the Spirit. You're invited to think about what God is holding for you during this time. What disappointments is God working through with you hold those before God our pastoral care ministers are here today to pray with you and for you or simply pray where you are please rise as you're able for this time of response And I think that's one of the things that oftentimes happens with disappointment. It's like we're ashamed this has happened in our lives. And so we just try to keep it all in. So the third thing I, I would say beyond questioning God and inviting God to question you is don't try to do it by yourself. And, and they say that's what we're supposed to do. It's like we've been taught that from an early age. That we're to be the strong individual. That we're to have strong shoulders. I mean, we live in a society where people say, I'm the only one that can fix it, and take great pride in this sense of independence. But the reality is, when disappointment hits, we need each other more than ever. And there's no shame in facing difficulties and struggles in life. Church, more than anywhere, needs to be the place where we can come and be real. And yet, we are taught that we're supposed to be praising and joyful and happy in church so how many of us pull ourselves together so we can look good in church how many of us muster every ounce of energy we have carrying this great weight on our shoulders only to walk in and lift ourselves up and put this fake smile on our face and say here I am I'm at church I love everybody everybody loves me and you're not feeling at, at all but you feel that's the expectation so you do that and you leave feeling worse than when you got here because you've had to be fake the whole time that's not what we're about this is a place where brokenness is welcome where you don't have to stand alone and you're hurt, where you have someone who maybe will not fix your problem, in fact, they probably will not fix your problem, but can listen to you in the midst of it. That's what we've got to be about. I mean, I love that we have the live streaming ministry now. It means that there's someone in a hotel somewhere now who couldn't get to church otherwise are able to be here. But we also need each other in the same room 
and in the same place where a warm hand can touch our hurting heart. How do you handle disappointment? Ask somebody to stand with you in it. Say, I need you. You need me. We need each other. That's what community is. That's why we're here. Indeed, it's not just a slogan. We are stronger together. And that's a powerful spiritual message that will strengthen us in times of disappointment. It's when we can see someone else looking back at us with love that we can begin to imagine again. Because when we look in the mirror and we only see ourselves, we will only see the hurt and the faults, and we'll get tired of what we see. But when we can look at somebody else and know that they're there with us, we can rise up again, and we can dream again, and we can imagine again, and we can think bigger than we did before because our world is bigger than ourselves. That's how you face disappointment. That's how you go through difficult times. Ultimately, that's what John did. Those disciples came back to him and said, we've got an answer for you now about who Jesus is. He's the one who's bringing healing. He's the one who's bringing hope. He's the one who's feeding. And John said, thank you for that message. With those words, he was no longer imprisoned, at least spiritually. When we have each other, nothing can bring us down. And now during these times, we need each other more than ever to restore hope again. Our congregation in St. Petersburg a few weeks ago had swastikas put on their sidewalks outside the church. It's the church that's now pastored by the former pastor here, the Reverend Elder Candace Schultes. And there was a lot of angst, a lot of anger, a lot of fear, so many feelings that came from that. It took a child. A child went, and beyond the hate symbols, that child took colorful markers, and drew unicorns and rainbows. At that moment, the wilderness of hatred was whooping with the joy of a child. A child who, in place of hate, gave images of color and love. That is our invitation. Do you hear the whooping in the wilderness today? Listen close. Because God is doing a brand new thing, working in us and through us. Know today that the desert and the wilderness is coming alive through the people of God. Amen and amen. And so we offer here these waters of baptism, waters that bring new life to the desert. Waters that renew, waters that restore. We also offer for you here today this oil and laying on of hands in ancient times. This was the balm in Gilead, the healing. It's also the presence of the Spirit. You're invited to think about what God is holding for you during this time. What disappointments is God working through with you? Hold those before God. Our pastoral care ministers are here today to pray with you and for you or simply pray where you are. Please rise as you're able for this time of response. Yeah. Through the people of God. Amen and amen. And so we offer here these waters of baptism, waters that bring new life to the desert, waters that renew, waters that restore. We also offer for you here today this oil and laying on of hands in ancient times. This was the balm in Gilead, the healing. It's also the presence of the Spirit. You're invited to think about what God is holding for you during this time. What disappointments is God working through with you. Hold those before God. Our pastoral care ministers are here today to pray with you and for you or simply pray 
where you are. Please rise as you're able for this time of response. response.